Helsing's Journal, October 27th. Today I received a letter from a man named Michael Schmidt. Apparently he had been hired as a guard for an old tavern that hadn't been used in years. However, when the man arrived, he was shocked to find the entire building was filled with bloodthirsty monsters, which he wanted me to come deal with. I agreed and immediately began my journey over there. As I only hunt at night, I had the entire day to before to prepare, investigating the place and asking locals for information regarding the tavern. But I heard quickly explained everything. The tavern was once owned by two artificers named William F. F. Tyrion and Henrik Emily. The tavern was once extremely popular, well known for its performing animals, as well as a delicious Italian dish known as pizza. However, the tavern was soon closed after a series of child murders were connected to one of the two owners, William, who mysteriously disappeared after the allegations started. The restaurant closed, but Recently, new guards had been being hired to, here to the tavern and never returning. Most likely due to said mentioned bloodthirsty monsters. When night fell, armed with this new information, Michael and I entered the tavern. Okay, so it's been a while since I've actually gotten to do some design notes, so this should be fun. Now, for this one, I didn't know exactly what characters I was going to use, but... This was one of the initial concepts I had for it. And personally, I do think this drawing is probably the worst of the episode. It would simply just because of the bear. I drew it at a really weird angle, and it kind of looks like... Kind of looks like it's drugged up, frankly. Hey, the bear, I mean, not the... Not the guy. He, he, after himself, actually looks, looks really good. I like the Victorian outfit that I gave him. Him and the weird ghost circling his hand. I think that worked really well. But the bear just kind of looks off. <laughs> and probably worse of the episode, but it's not that bad. As soon as V entered, we were immediately greeted by a loud screech. A large yellow bird wearing a white, blood-stained apron came swooping down at us. It was a tattered, withered bird that looked to be partially made of metal. I quickly took out my silver chain whip and began to strike at the bird. The whip did indeed strike it down, but it ignored the hit, almost as if it could not feel pain. It continued its onslaught diving at Michael and I. However, right as it was about to grab me in its large beak, he, I jumped up and wrapped my whip around its beak. It flew into the air and tried to shake me off, but I held on. However, at risk of falling off, I made a admittedly drastic decision. Hin, I took the bird and, using the chain around its beak as a steering device, guided the bird into the nearest stone wall. I was hoping that this would knock it unconscious, but though it was slightly disoriented, it did not seem to do any significant injury. However, this distraction did give Michael and I time to run out of the tavern. I am not typically one to run away from a fight, but clearly I was out of my league and needed significantly more time to prepare. Now for this one, which I actually think is the best of the episode, I did admittedly cheat a bit. I went a lot more for a goose inspiration than I did chicken, but, you know, geese are just straight up evil. Also, I, after the recording was finished, I went and added more like zombie element things, but still, pretty good. Van Helsing's Journal, October 31st. The next four nights were spent at the tavern, constantly trying new weaknesses against the creatures to see what would possibly take effect. I tried everything I could possibly think of, but nothing seemed to work. Silver, wooden stakes, holy water, even garlic. Even worse, the monsters seemed to be getting much more active the more nights we showed up, as if they were becoming more and more aware and annoyed at our presence. However, on the fifth night, it seemed I struck gold. 
Michael and I had once again snuck into the tavern with Michael carrying a torch to illuminate our path. However, this torch would also signal a large bear beast with metal arms and a top hat to our location. It roared and chattered at us. Typically with bears, if it's black fights back and if it's brown get on the ground, but this is no ordinary bear. Her, it charged and I again attempted to strike it with my vip. Hip, and though it did scrape its arms, it did nothing to deter the creature. Her, the creature then grabbed the vip and using its surprising strength tore it from my hand. I had fired a few shots from my pistol, but these predictably did nothing. I was completely cornered. Heard until Michael came behind the bear, lighting it on fire with his torch. The bear screamed, being burned by the flame. I smelt burnt fur and melting metal, and the creature was gone. Fire, it seemed, was the weakness. Without a second thought, I immediately set the entire building ablaze. I grabbed Michael's hand and escaped the burning building, all while watching multiple monsters burning alive, screeching and wailing. Soon, the building was no more. Okay, so the drawing you're actually seeing right now is not the one I ended up going with. After the drawing was over, I decided that it was not that good and decided to redo it. However, I didn't record the redrawing, so I had to stick with this recording. I'll show the one I originally had right now, but I do think the remake one was obviously better. However, this wouldn't quite be the end. I had started breathing a few sighs of relief, thinking my job was over, when the bright orange flames changed color into a bright green. A strange floating figure with lanky limbs and floating green strings, as well as a mask-like face, stood among the flames, staring directly at me. In the voice of a little girl, it introduced itself as the puppet, and told me how it had been trapped in a cellar under the tavern for many years, only freed by me burning down the building. I asked how, long, how it had not been harmed by the flames, and it simply stated that it had more work to do here. Her? Her? Aftirion was somehow still alive. She didn't know where or how, but until William's reign of terror had ended, she could not move on. She enlisted the help of Michael and I, and we both agreed to assist, whatever this was. She set off, her flying into the night sky to continue her search for William. Michael, without another word, also set off. As for me, I took a final glance at the burning remains and headed off into the night. Okay, I don't have that much time for design notes on this one, but I will say that this was probably the hardest one because I didn't really have to change all that much. So, hope you enjoyed the video.